almost had his mask because he carried him up. <laughs> okay, all three of them. You hear me? Yeah. I got the cord, but I ain't got no, yeah, no charge. charge it. It's going to take a while, I believe. So you're up, man? You down? You down? Oh, man. I mean, I'm, I'm uh, I got a. Uh, I know you don't want to turn it off. And just when you thought it would save, it is, well, you can already see, it is not going to be a safe night. Never have I came on with a guest on the show, but this guest is so important and the contents of this show is so important that I've got Dr. Harrington on right now. There's been a lot of discussion about this particular election. Why is Doc running? Is he fit to run? Is his mind in good shape? Is his body in good shape? Is he too old? Why didn't he debate? All of those questions tonight is going to be answered here on the Thaddeus Matthews TV show. I'm going to give you just a few minutes for everybody to get on in, and then we're going to jump right into my interview with Dr. W. W. Harrison, the next elected mayor of the city of Memphis. We're going to do it right after these commercial messages. Uh, yeah, you took that, you took that other, uh, commercial out that had that April information in it then. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Let me reposition this mic too. You still got me good? Uh huh? Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. Uh. Okay. 
Yeah, because it's a it is good dog. Good dog, and the volume is not gonna. Okay. You got some good ones on here. Yeah. Volume is on that. Okay. It's sweet. Okay. And thank you. My guest tonight is W. W. Harrington, former mayor of the city of Memphis. After spending nearly 20 years as the mayor of Memphis, being elected, what is it, five times? Five times, yes. Five times. After Doc, first of all, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. After your last election, one of the biggest questions that's being asked, you resigned from office. Why did you resign? Well, you know, Thaddeus, if, if you will recall, I clearly uh, delineated to the Memphis public on your show. Mm -hmm. Uh, the reasons why I resigned. I've not done that in any public forum other than on this show. Uh, so I will reiterate uh, mm -hmm. what I told you and your audience uh, uh, the last time I was on the show. Uh, let me take you back to my last two years as mayor. If you will recall, man, I was inundated with all kinds of allegations of improprieties. I was under a federal investigation by the U.S. Attorney's Office. The FBI was surrounding us. Uh, I was under a great deal of personal pressures. If you will also remember, uh, my mother was very dear to me. Uh, every day that God gave me when I left work, my security people and everybody know I want to see my mother. <laughs> okay. And uh, I would love to go in the summertime and sit on the porch with mom. Mm -hmm. So when I was going through uh, all this investigation, they had me on the news almost every week. So I said, Mom, stop looking at television. Stop reading the newspaper. Man, you know, your mothers, they love, they love their children. So she thought I was going to prison. She says, Willie, why do you keep doing this? Why do you stay in public office? So I said, Mom, you don't understand, darling. I can handle all of this, okay? I can handle, I'm not worried about being convicted or any of this. Yes, they're gonna make life miserable for me. Um, that was one of the reasons. The, the other reason was I could not that is at that time focus clearly on my duties as mayor because I had all of this, uh, these pressures surrounding me from the federal investigation and the pressures of seeing my mother absorb all of this agony and pain. It was eating at me. I mean, really eating at me. There were some people who thought I cut a deal with somebody. Mm -hmm. Well, the people know me, I don't cut deals. I did not cut a deal. Uh, I made my mother uh, very happy when I resigned, okay, I resigned. Uh, so now, whether people buy that, I don't give a damn. Okay. That's the truth. Okay. I love my mother. Uh, the pressures were not unbearable for me, but it was just hurting my mom. And uh, then I got bored because I was distracted. And that is, being a mayor is not something that I was eating and sleeping every day. I'm a different kind of dude. Uh, mm. uh, A.C. Warren loved being the mayor. Strickland loved, they eat and sleep this stuff being the mayor. To me, I was honored that the people of Memphis selected me as mayor for so many times, but I could do without being the mayor. The mayor didn't make me. Mm -hmm. I don't need, I didn't need that. Mm -hmm. So for me to relinquish it, yeah, uh, was nothing. 
So mom was happy. And I think, you know, I lost my mom uh, a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, those are the two reasons. They're very personal. And I tell people, uh, some of my critics, they say, you did this. I said, hell, I had a right to terminate that tenure if it was adversely impacting the health and the well-being and the relationship with my mom. And then I clearly couldn't focus. I was bored. Let me tell you something that you don't want after you in this society. You don't want IRS. You don't want the U.S. Attorney's Office and the FBI on you. Mm -hmm. If you ever go through those kinds of experiences, you will have a lot of sleepless nights. The Commercial Appeal, I hope you saw today what happened. Uh, they had an article in the Commercial Appeal, and I know you're going to get to the, the, why I'm not debating, why I'm not cooperating with the media. Mm -hmm. That is, if you looked at the Commercial Appeal today, they had an article covering the major elections in the state of Tennessee. In Memphis, they showed uh, uh, the young lady, the African-American young lady that's a candidate, mm -hmm. Mayor Strickland, they showed the mayoral candidates in Nashville, and I believe one other city in Tennessee. Guess what? They didn't show my picture. Okay. Okay, all you gotta do, is look. Now, the Commercial Appeal made a decision to black out, to black me out. Okay. Okay, now you know why they did that? They sent me an invitation to come to appear before their editorial board. You know what I told them? What did I tell them? Probably hell no. Hell no. Why was I going to go in front of the Commercial Appeal editorial board when it was clear to me they've already made up their mind, they're going to endorse Strickland. I was not going to give, what's that new lady they got, that Weatherby and the, the new, I was not going to give them the pleasure of sitting me behind a desk asking me some questions. So they're upset about it. Uh, they're not covering me. People are calling me about advertising. I don't advertise. There's only one media outlet that we've done any advertisement with. I think you know who that is. Mm -hmm. Only one. I'm getting all kinds of uh, invitations that people want us to do. We turn down, you know, I mean, you know how many interviews they want me all on television? I don't go on their shows. I do not, let me tell you, I do not support the white media establishment that is always trying to distort news, fake news about me. They've done it for 18 years. People wanted to know about those uh, cartoons they did. Right. Did I get upset about it? No. You know why I didn't get upset about this? Hell, they've been doing that to me for 17 years when I was mayor. If you go back and look at the collection of cartoons, they did horrible cartoons of me when I was mayor. So this recent one, it didn't upset me. Okay. <laughs> because I've been accustomed to it. And in, in that, they apologized to yeah. Tammy Sawyer, uh, but they didn't apologize <laughs> to you. <laughs> that, what did I do to these people, man? They just got a, I mean, uh, uh, they just don't like me. <laughs> well, the, one of the, the greatest fear of the white man is a strong black man. I understand that. Okay, yeah. so when you are a strong black man and you present yourself as a strong black man, then the white men that control media in this town, they systematically try to destroy you right. through various means. When we go back and we talk about you uh, resigning, whatever happened to the investigations well, let me, let me tell you, uh, and you're a preacher. You know the biblical story about Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego mm -hmm. in the fiery furnace. Mm -hmm. You know about that, don't you? Right. Okay. Uh, King Nebuchadnezzar. And when they turned, they, they, they turned the blast up. And the king said, I thought we had three individuals, but I see four. Uh -huh. And the fourth man showed up. And you the pastor. Who was the fourth man? That was God. That was God. He showed up. Okay. 
Let me tell you who the fourth man was for me, because I was in the fiery furnace. Okay. They had already determined, I'm telling you too much is going to be in my book. You know, I'm okay. writing a book. Man, you've been writing a book a I know that, but here, I'm going to get this book done. <laughs> okay. All right. As soon as I win this election, let me uh -huh. tell you what's going on. Uh, probably take a month off. I uh, got a couple of ghost writers. We're going to get this book done. I have a, a good section in there on the media. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're going to love this book. It's, it's a tell all. Tell me about that fourth person, though. Oh, you said you're a pastor. I'm okay. Pastor Harrington. You, you, I'm telling you about the, the. Let me tell you how the fourth man. Let me tell you who the fourth man was. Okay. The fourth man was a U.S. Supreme Court. If you will remember, they had on the federal statute. It's calling depriving of honest service. Mm -hmm. That was a law that the U.S. Supreme Court declared vague. It gave the U.S. Attorney's Office and the FBI, if, if you're a public official and you sneeze, they can assemble a, a grand jury and indict mm -hmm. you. Okay. If you will remember, uh, I was under uh, the federal grand jury. So the time was running out. They had planned with the federal prosecutor for my Christmas gift to be multiple indictments. Okay. But when the Supreme Court declared that that particular depriving of honest service was unconstitutional, then the federal officials, the federal officials did not move forward. Okay. So the pastor. The fourth man was the U.S. Supreme Court because I was in the fiery furnace. They had planned to indict me. A good Jewish lawyer who's a friend of mine said to me, he said, Willie, uh, and I will never forget this. He said, Willie, he said, they are going to persecute you, then prosecute you. He said, persecution comes before prosecution. He's a gifted lawyer. Mm -hmm. He saw all of this coming. If you will remember, they put me in, they said I stole a $20 million garage at the Philly store. Do you remember that? Right. How in the hell is a person going to steal a $20 million garage? They put my picture in the paper. Then they had people watch the Harrington stole $20 million. And you know, that's nonsense. They put the headlines in the paper. It doesn't have to have any veracity. Veracity means truth. So, now, so how, 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 that? After, after you go through all of that. I know what you're going to ask me. <laughs> okay. After you go through all of the persecution oh, yeah. without the prosecution, you go through the hate of the white controlled media. Why do you want to be mad again? But let me, I'm, I'm going to answer that. And, and something else I want you to add to this, that is, because uh -huh. uh, I know we're going to get to it tonight. I just left a group of strong, courageous black men. We, they're coming out. You were there when we had 425 men to show up. Mm -hmm. We just left another meeting, and these brothers are organized. And it came, tears came to my eyes because I said, you know what? There are not many brothers with strength, courage left. They're working on my behalf. We just left about 50 of them at my campaign headquarters. Mm -hmm. And I said, are any of y'all preachers in here? Mm. I said, I'm getting ready to say something about some preachers. So Mike said, this guy, he said, we got two preachers in here. Okay. <laughs> so I said, okay, I'm going to leave it alone. I said, let me tell you all something. I said, I'm almost 80 years old. There are several traits that I have learned that are bad for a human being to have. And let me tell you what they are. Mm -hmm. It's jealousy, mm -hmm. envy, and greed. Mm -hmm. Greed, jealousy, and envy. So I want to add all of that to your prosecution and your persecution, uh, Thaddeus. Now, what that means to me is I must be the right man for the right cause because I'm attracting so many enemies, okay? But I have the resolve, I, I have the strength to endure. For whatever reason, God gave me the resiliency and the strength to endure, to stay on this particular cause. The other thing, that is, um, if I don't do this, uh, I hope you don't take this as self-aggrandizing, who gonna do it? 
I think I told you, Thaddeus, and there's a letter that you're going to be privileged to get. When they tried to, the closest thing to a bribe, nobody ever tried to bribe me when I was mayor. Okay. Nobody would come to me with nonsense. Nobody ever offered me no money. Nobody offered me any strange, crazy stuff. I'm talking in my whole career. Mm -hmm. The closest thing to a bribe to me came, and this gentleman is dead now. Richard Fields came to me, listen to me, on behalf, mm -hmm. on behalf of some respectable business leaders mm -hmm. and said, Willie, the polls show you can't win. I saw Mr. The Poster uh, mm -hmm. at Sidney Chisholm's event. Mm -hmm. I said, sir, so you the poster. I said, you ain't too damn good. You did some polling, which I in indicated that I was losing. Some wealthy people paid him. And I won that election. It was, I think it was, my years may be wrong. I think it was 2007. Okay. I may be wrong on the year. So they sent me the poll results. Fields and another prominent businessman and said they wanted to know what would make me happy. Listen to me. Mm -hmm. What would make me happy? They didn't think it was in my career and my, no, my legacy. Mm -hmm. They said, look, Willie, you had a great legacy. The first few terms, you've done well. And there are a number of people think now you're divisive and we need to move forward. Uh, we don't want you to run for re-election. They wanted A.C. Wharton. Okay? When they asked me what would make me happy, what does that mean? Do you understand the question? I know what you would. You know what they were uh, asking me. How much money would it take to, to keep, keep me from, from running? running okay, right. I keep me from running. You're going to see in my book the letter I wrote. They were asking me that on behalf of A.C. Wharton. When I wrote them this particular letter, and I would like to give it to you, but you'd have to swear to me that you would never reveal that you saw it until I, after it's in the book. Well, don't give it to me, Bob. You're right, because you tell every damn thing. I know <laughs> if I give it to you. Okay. But, I, but, but you, I just oh, right. want you to know to believe me. Look, right. I wrote Warden a letter, mm -hmm. and you're going to love it. After I wrote them the letter, and they saw there was no amount of money that could be given to me to keep me from running, that's when they hardballed me. That's when it's... That's when all the federal investigation, so when they couldn't buy me, they tried to lock me up. You understand me? Sure. So, you asked me why, okay, uh, you know, but, I don't like but, the but, way but, I But after all of this, man. Okay, let me tell you, I, I'm going to answer your question again. Okay. Then, two other reasons, that is, I, I know I'm built kind of differently. Man, uh, but Dr. King's MLK 50th, you were there April 5th. Uh, I said, man, on the rededication of Dr. King and his legacy, um, Dr. King had an unfinished agenda, but he's gone. I have an unfinished agenda, but I'm still alive. My rededication to Dr. King I made it April 5th when I announced on the campus of Lemoyne that I was going to run. People didn't know why I chose that date, mm -hmm. why I chose that year. And I'm going to give you some years. I don't want you to think I'm psychic or crazy. I was 28 in 1968 when I marched with Dr. King. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, and what was the 18, 2018 was when we celebrated, it was 2018. The 50th, am I right? right? All the eights. And I was 78 years old. Okay. Do you understand me? Okay. All of the eights lined up for me. So, it, it, no, okay, no, if you're not, it, okay, let me say this. If you're not deep in your religious faith, you won't follow me. Mm -hmm. it, uh, my life, that it just has always been in order. God has always placed me in time and space for challenges. So it was clear to me that for whatever 
life I got left is to rededication to the John Prince dream of Dr. King and my own personal one here well, in Memphis. So you're saying, Doc, that you're running the game because that was something that you did not fulfill. Of course. I did not fulfill it. Let me tell you what I didn't do, Thaddeus. Okay. Okay, we revamped public housing. I think I told you, man, I will never forget it was at Lamar Terrace and we were campaigning and we went over in Lamar Terrace and Thaddeus, I had never seen dilapidated housing like that. Those apartments were unfit for human habitation. And I went through them when I told my delegation. I said, if God enlarges my territory, I'm gonna do something about this. Under my leadership, we revamped public housing. Go on Crump and Lamar, you see waterfalls. Have you ever been there? Yeah. The complexes are beautiful. Anybody would wanna live there. Lamar and Gardens. We transformed it. Hurt Village. And we had Dixie Homes on the drawing board before I left. So what did we do? We revamped public housing. So when, oh, when, when we said it, well, in, the, in the, black. Doc, you didn't took over my okay, show. Yeah, you got me talking. Thank you, Doc. Yes, sir. Uh, and this is a Thaddeus Matthews It is show. a Thaddeus. This ain't the WWE. This is right. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> when you get in the office, you know, <laughs> let me come by there every now and then. But look, so when we look at the revamping of public housing in Memphis. Right. None of this happened under Warden. None of this happened under Strickland. Yeah. So, and, and, and I think that a lot of the younger people don't know the history of how a lot of the things that they see now happening, happen. Because you've had Strickland You've also had, you had Warden. Warden that took credit for a lot of this. Look, my guest is Dr. W.W. W. Herriton. When we come back, I'm going to ask him about black preachers who on Saturday endorsed Strickland. You know they took their page down, though. Off of Strickland's page. No, I didn't. They took it down today. We'll talk about it right after these commercial messages. Okay, it's gone. Hey, let me let me explain something else to you. Can they hear me now? They can hear your social media. Oh no, I'm, I'm, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. I got good. I'm good with that. Dale, come see what happened with this tab is here. The Instagram gone. Oh, that was good. That was good. <laughs> Hey, you give me warming up, man. I mean, I ain't, I got seven three letter words up there. Yeah, really. That's all right. No. He said no. No. They gonna, <laughs> they gonna judge me, man. <laughs> well, you already judged. I don't think they judge you on this show. Not they will not judge you on this show. Oh, nobody. You gotta tell. Oh, no. What happened? I thought she was talking to you. Get it charged up. Mm -hmm. That is my time to get the whole two hours. Huh? You don't keep it two hours. Uh huh. The way you talking, Doc, you didn't give me a chance to ask him. I said, I'm not making sure. I know this is a Thaddeus Matthews show. Yeah. Sure. I'm just a guest. <laughs> hey, no, I'm T, it, can you turn the volume up? Please do. I'm enjoying it, yeah. Turn the volume up. Um, <laughs> someone's saying that they can barely hear him. Oh, is that right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. On the TV, he sounds fine. They can't hear him on social media because there is no mic for social media. I've oh. played it 12 times. Okay, well, hell. <laughs> oh, is that what it is? Am I not I'm not, yeah. I'm not talking loud enough. Yeah, I guess you might have to talk loud enough. Okay, yeah, we need to. I got you. I'm sorry.
Antares ve Amiri Kevin Newmore son bir yanıma bu. I'm going to my mother in 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 my I do have one, but I'm going to wait and let him see it in the book. Yeah. How many more you got? What, what do you have after this? T, what do you have after this? Bring me back after this. Because I got the smile, man. You got me in a serious mode, man. Think about me. I got to get on the smile. Okay. And welcome back. My guest is Dr. W. W. Harrington. Doc, Saturday, Strickland called a group of black preachers, black pastors, about 30 of them, to endorse him and support him. Several of them were very strong with you in 91, they were involved in your campaign through the years. And that pissed me off. Now, I, I, it, it, it irritated me when I saw Bill Atkins, who came to prominence off the backs of being a black activist, Lucimba Gray, who was with Jesse Jackson, they were with Push. And these black pastors endorsed Jim Strickland. And then I found out that LaCymbal Gray lives in Collierville. Bill Atkins lives in Fayette County. Brandon Porter lives in Collierville. Ed Stevens lives in Collierville. They can't vote for you, but yet Instead, they joined in with Strickland and saying he's the great white hope. I've seen several other people that were close to you. Uh, Tawan, I, I, I saw Sydney in a commercial with Jim Strickland. What's the reason that, in your opinion, that these preachers and people who have worked close with you, things, people that you've done things for, why all of a sudden, or is it all of a sudden, that they have jumped ship and they think that in a city that is over 70% black, that a white mayor is what our community needs. Somebody said, forgive them for they know not what they do. You know where that statement was made? I know where it was made, but why you make it? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm saying forgive them for they know not what they but do. But that's a reason. That, that That's a okay. reason. Let me give you the reason. Okay, I give, forgive them. All right, you, you forgive your them, but give, give us you the reason. reason. Okay. okay. That is... Um, let me tell you what a white man who happens to be my friend and if you have some white people looking on the audience tonight you do 
Because all of the networks, they're watching your show tonight. Uh-huh. I mean, they're watching this tonight. Of course. I have a number of good white friends that have said to their white neighbors, we support Willie Harrington. He can put a sign in our yard. We're going to contribute to him. We believe in him. Here's a man that we've been friends over 20 years. He texts me, called me. He said, I saw your old friend, mm -hmm. Sidney Chisholm, mm -hmm. campaigning with Mayor Strickland. Okay. Uh, I didn't say anything bad about Sidney to this gentleman. I said, well, there's some people that go to the dance with you, they don't leave with you. That's all I said about him. You know what he said to me? He said, Willie, I know this is your friend. He said, but you know, uh, I'm gonna tell you something. He said, I'm with you. He said, I'm with you if I'm in, and most of the time I'm in a minority with white folk, but they know I'm committed to you. You know what he said to me? Uh -huh. He said, one of the, and he's a Republican. I went to the Republican event. He said, one thing is Republican, we do. He said, Republican, we stick together. And he said, and white folk, we stick together. Okay. This, this is what hurt me. He said, uh, one of the drawbacks in your people is that you don't stick together. That hurt me more for him characterizing what Sidney did than what Sidney did was for a white man to acknowledge that one of the downfalls of my race is that we do not stick together. Well, That's what? what he said to me. Now, I, I, okay. do, do you know how powerful that is? Yes. I had to absorb that. The man was right. That's what he said. Now, let me tell you something else. Remember I told you earlier about jealousy? Uh-huh. Jealousy. I told you about envy. I told you about greed. Okay, let me dissect this for you. And there's one other minister, and I won't call his name. Every opportunity he gets, and he's a commentator on one of the shows, he will blast me or downgrade me. He's a Tammy Sawyer uh, supporter. You know him, you like him. Do, do no, I like I'm not, him? Yes, you like him. I'm not call, I don't call any name. You know him and like You call him name. Okay. I'm trying to see somebody well, I like. No, you do like him. But you, yeah, you do like You say you like him. Uh, and I'm going to get to your, your buddy, Ricky Floyd. Is that his name? Yeah. yeah possibly. Okay. And I'm going to ask you some questions. I want you to, if I can, Mr. May, I know it's your show. I want you to tell me how you become an, what is an apostle and what is a bishop. I want you to tell me that. I see all of these people, they are apostles and I'm not, I want you, will you do that for me before I leave? Well, I mean, the, the <laughs> definition of apostle is huh? one who walked with Jesus. Are you serious? Yeah. So, if somebody is an apostle, they walk. They walk with Jesus. Okay, I got it. Okay, okay. how do you, be, what is a bishop? Can you, can you call you, can you be a self-proclaimed bishop? Or does somebody over you make you a bishop? Suppose you're supposed to be proclaimed a, a bishop, which makes you a pastor over more than one church. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So th those are the definitions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know what's interesting too? You mm -hmm. have you ever heard me introduce myself as Dr. Willie Harrington? No. Have you ever heard me say Mayor Harrington? No. Never. I get tired of running into these people with these titles. I'm Bishop so-and-so. I'm Apostle this. It is these congregations that have taken and elevated uh, some of these preachers to some status that I don't understand. You either are Apostle or Bishop. Uh, it's the congregations. Mm -hmm. And then I hear guys come up there, well, I'm apostle this, I'm pastor this, I'm Reverend. I said, I'm just Willie Harrington. Mm -hmm. I'm just old Willie. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. don't have to call me Dr. Harrington or mayor. I'm just Willie Harrington. And I got a PhD. Mm -hmm. I've had it almost 40 years. Mm -hmm. You never hear me say, I'm Dr. Harrington. 
or I'm Mayor Harold. To get at what is going on here is self-aggrandizement, the jealousy. How many individuals do you know can call a meeting, you were there. There were 1,130 women, primarily African Americans, who came to an event mm -hmm. to celebrate and to promote my candidacy. Mm -hmm. How many people you know that can call an event and get that kind of response? Very few. Very few. How many preachers can do that? Very few. Very few. No politicians can do that. They are jealous because the people, the real people of Memphis, not the bougies, not some blacks that got two quarters, <laughs> two quarters that they can rub together. Okay. It's the real people that have uh, kept me relevant because when I was Mayor Thaddeus, I never removed myself from the people. You saw me eat at Piccadilly's. Mm -hmm. You never saw, you, you've never seen me with uh, a group of people. Always one person. Mm -hmm. I don't hang around the fraternities and all of that. I have been a very independent person, yet I get along with all people. It's the real people, and it's the old people. That's why I'm going to win. I'm going to win this election because people 50 and older, and especially the African-American female vote, mm -hmm. they're going to vote for me because I earned their respect over the years. Now, back to these preachers. Mm -hmm. Remember, this happened in 1991. Mm -hmm. We had 12 of them, 12 black preachers then. Mm -hmm. Hackett had promised them all kinds of things. Bishop Willie Lee Porter was mm. in that group. Mm. He had a church over there on, was that Chelsea? Yeah, Am Brandon's right? daddy. Brandon's daddy. So listen to me. Okay. Brandon's daddy did this in 1991. His daddy did. Mm-hmm. So all Brandon Porter had done, he followed suit on what his daddy did in 1991. But let me tell you how I helped his daddy. After I got elected, they had a, 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 an apartment complex deal. Robert Liskin was my uh, division director. They had a deal, they had worked it out. I didn't hurt the bishop. They have some apartments right down there in East Chicago now. Mm -hmm. I could have avoided that. Those apartments in New Chicago right now, they started on a Bishop uh, Willie Lee Porter. Willie Lee. That's his name. Yes. I know the, let me, let me tell you about the Porters. Don't get me started on Don't Willie Don't get me Lee started, Porter, dog. No, hell no, don't get me started. Yeah. But anyway, that's, that's on one of them. Uh, Bill Atkins. Bill Atkins. He was on WLOK. Uh, helped me tremendously. When when Harold Ford was having those issues, because Harold Ford really didn't want me to be the mayor. Were you over at Ralph White's church when we did yeah. that? Yeah. Do you remember? I call this a meeting in the upper room. In the back, the, the back room. Let me give it a check. We went right. up in in Ralph White in the back area. Is some steps you right. go up, and it, help me with my memory. Uh, it was Atkins. Uh, uh, Harold Ford Sr. Higgs. Uh, Higgs. Uh, who else was in that room? We had a couple of other preachers and me. And uh, uh, Bill Atkins came. He said, he said Harold, because the people were getting restless out there. They right. wanted a decision. So uh, he was nervous. Harold was shaking. So uh, Bill Atkins said, Harold, people want a decision. They want a decision. Higgs said to us in this meeting, he said, look, I can win this election. I got a group of white people that are going to support me, and I remember. And forgive me for what I say, I'm going to say to you. I said, this is the very reason we cannot allow Higgs to run. I said, he's got confidence that white people are going to vote for him. I said, hell, the white people ain't going to vote for you, and I don't know no black people that's in love with you. You're a loser. Mm. I said, that's the very reason we'll lose if you're the candidate. And Harold then starts shaking. He said, well, Otis, I think Harold is right. I think Harold's going to run. Otis got mad, walked out of the meeting. That's why you saw his walk out the meeting. 
And then you saw Ford come out with all this theatricals. Ladies and gentlemen, you know how Ford mm -hmm. was. Mm -hmm. We have reached a decision. The candidate, and you know how Harold Ford mm -hmm. <laughs> is, mm -hmm. Dr. W. W. Harrington, everybody stood up. Well, that was my meeting. Okay. I was, you saw that. There ain't nothing right. but Harrington signs out there. Right. Okay. That was a meeting up in the other room. Atkins was with me then. As I kept being elevated, re-elected, that envy, that jealousy, started building up. And I, with, uh, that's Mike's former pastor, um, Lucimba Gray. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know what I did to the simple Gray. Um, he said some very ugly things about me once on a push show. Uh, you know, I've not been a perfect man. Um, but you can't question my integrity and my principle. Morally, I've had some slips. I've been a man. Okay? I've had the Bushido. I didn't send nobody to the line to be killed, though. Mm -hmm. You know the story of David and Bashir. Yeah, I know You're the pastor. I know the story. I ain't the pastor. You would have But you had to kill Bashir. And a fine Bashir is <laughs> I've been a man. They right. never accused me of being no punk. Yeah. And you was a single man. You know what I'm talking They ain't going to call me no punk, right? Okay. Right. Okay. So I've had some moral slips. Mm -hmm. But I had immoral people to judge me. Mm -hmm. The Bible says none is righteous. No, not no, one. not one. Right. Am I right? Right. But some of Gray judged me. He judged me for an indiscretion. But when Jesse Jackson Come had on. a similar incident, Come on. there was nothing, to, and, and Jesse's cool with me. Okay. But there was no judgment there. Okay. Listen to me. Okay. He okay. judged me. Okay. I didn't judge him. Mm -hmm. I just heard something recently about his situation. I'm not going to tell you about it. It ain't my business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what happens, and, 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 and Bishop Stevens, I remember when he was in that little church over there. In North on Breed Love. On Breed Love. Yeah. Right, so we have a great relationship. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, he's now bishop. I'm telling you, it, it, look, man, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, God's church, upon this rock I build my church, and if the, if the gates of hell prevail, shall not prevail against But it didn't say would none get in it. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Okay. okay. So what, what we got out here now, mm -hmm. and, and, and that is, mm -hmm. that is because if you notice, when the preachers made the announcement, they said major, major church leaders. Mm -hmm. Somebody declared that group major. Mm -hmm. So that means you ain't major. Well, look, what let, does that mean? Let it get on. I'm I'm give, I don't give a I'm damn. I'm not talking about you. Right, right. I know what you know talking about. But, but here's That's what, what they did, though. I don't give a damn about none of them. Because, see, I call them sellouts. Okay. And I attacked them on Facebook. And I also attacked the fact that you allow Strickland to put your church in a negative position with the IRS because it is against IRS tax exempt. You, they're all 501c3s. That move that they made Saturday violated the code of the IRS. I don't know. And, and yeah, I, I put the code up on Facebook. And for some reason, on Strickland's page, the preachers have come off. He took that off of the page. Okay? I think that they were sellouts. I think that they're jealous. Every preacher in there. And for the Summer Gray, Bill Atkins, Brandon Porter, right. and Ed Stevens, who do not live in the city of Memphis. How can they tell black folk that live in the city of Memphis that the white man is better to them than a man who's been there for 17 years and proves himself? 
All right, let's get away from that, Doc. Okay. <laughs> when elected as the mayor of the city of Memphis, one of the greatest concerns that citizens have is the crime problem, crime with our young people. Mm -hmm. The elderly are fearful to leave the house, but then, damn, they scared to stay in the house. Uh, you, you, you're you worried about carjackings. Oh, yeah. Crime under these two administrations, and I'm talking about Warden, okay. and also there's been a push in crime under the Strickland administration, even though he ran on the agenda that he's going to do something to reduce crime. When elected mayor, what is Willie Harrington's plan to make it safer for the citizens of Memphis? Okay, first of all, Sergeant, I'm gonna answer your question straightforwardly in a minute, but let me give you the prelude mm -hmm. to me answering your question. Um, that is, uh, you, you often describe the demographics of Memphis. We are a majority black city. Right. A majority black city. 40% of the children are born into poverty. Black children in Memphis. Mm -hmm. We have one of the highest poverty rates in America. Mm -hmm. Right here in Memphis. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you take, you take that sociological, economical profile, what I just gave you, uh -huh. okay? Then you look at academic achievement, which is very low in our public school system, and the poverty. You look at all of those particular elements, uh, lack of affordable housing, all of that, uh, deteriorating family structure, single-headed household families. You add all of those sociological and economical challenges we have, and it creates a city, it creates a city that's quite unique and requires certain types of leadership. First of all, it must be the leadership that understands root causes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I said all of that to say to you, what I'm sensing, man, among the young people is they don't see, they don't have a sense of hope. Okay. Uh, it's pervasive. Uh, I was going to MAPCO here at, uh, what's that, Danny Thomas and uh, Crump. Okay. So some young brothers, uh, they're getting out the car. They got the pants all down, they got the earrings, and then when the, the, the car opened up, I smelled the weed. Okay. So I know they've been smoking dope in the car. So they get out, hey, they, they, they said, hey, that's that man that tell him to get the hell out of my office. Okay. So they release it. Okay. That is, they okay. recognize me. Okay. So that's the man. So I'm taking pictures with these guys. And uh, they said, I'm going to vote for you. I'm going to vote. I said, hold up now. I said, I started talking to them, street talk. I said, can you vote? Hey, you been in jail. So the little boy started shaking his head. Yeah, I'm having a few little problems. Uh -huh. But you the mayor. Hey, can we take a picture out? They know me from that saying, get the hell out of my office. Okay. okay. So they were pumped up. To meet me now you might say that ain't important you know what was important about that mm -hmm. they could identify me with some sense of importance that looked like them okay that looked like them okay i see older people older people that looked forward to the day that we could have had a black mayor of memphis we did that uh-huh even they've lived, and you and I both have lived long enough to see we had a black president. Okay. And we can argue whether Obama did A, B, C, and D for everybody, which he did. Okay. Okay. But at least it gave black folks a sense of respectability and pride. You look at the city today, and I'm sensing this. A lot of these brothers, they're and sisters, they without hope. I'm not saying because Willie Harrington goes back that people are going to stop doing this domestic violence. And you know, there's a lot of that personal relationship. Mm -hmm. But that is, we can break up gangs. How we did it? Let me tell you, we did it on the Blue Cross. 
Okay. Let me, you, you, um, now let me ask you, answer your question pointedly. Obviously, and I want everybody to know this, uh, I'm going to have a national search mm -hmm. for police director. So Mike Rollins will be gone. I've already said to Mr. Look, and I, I, I don't have a problem with this young man. He just can't be my chief. Okay. Okay? Uh, so I'm going to have a national search for a crime fighter. Okay. Yeah. So I know there's a lot of discussions in the community. You've probably been engaged in them too. I don't know. Talking about who the next, if Harrington is there, who the police chief going to be, mm -hmm. and then Strickland wins, who's he going to promote after that. That's police discussions. Are you following me? Right. I know that's going on, but I'm letting the world know mm -hmm. that when I'm reelected, I'm going to have a national search and I want to identify a crime fighter mm -hmm. to come into Memphis mm -hmm. and give strong, aggressive leadership. That director is going to have to look at Blue Cross, mm -hmm. which we're going to put on the table again. Mm -hmm. It was one of the most effective crime fighting strategies. Now, when I was mayor, mm -hmm. I met with Larry Godwin often. I knew what they were going to do. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you one other, and God bless his soul, rest in peace. Rufus Gates, whom you probably remember. Right, him. yes. Did you yes. know Rufus? Right. Man, uh, Rufus Gates had more intelligence on gangs and drug trafficking than any one person I knew. Okay. Are you following me? Right. So we had antennas out in the community on where when they were stealing all those cars, what you call them, the, the chop, what you call them? Chop, chop shop. Chop shop. How were we penetrating stuff? We were penetrating stuff. Organized crime was effective then. Okay. I had organized crime. So I know a lot about policing. You okay. know why? Because I met with my director. When they were going in the Blue Cross and those paddy wagons and we were busting stuff up, mm -hmm. yeah, I know how to do that. I just need leadership. So that's what I want to change the leadership. So do you think then that the leadership is the cause of the crime? No, no, no. no. Whomever the police director is, I mean, he and, can't and wait. About, I'm talking about I'm coming from the mayor's that. office. I'm talking oh, no. about coming from the mayor's I'm office who appoints the director. Okay. But, but you asked me a different question. Pastor. Okay. What the mayor can do and what the mayor is responsible for doing is making sure that there's strong, capable leadership and that the police department has the resources. Okay. 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 They need to have a, 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 a complement of officers to make sure that they can, you know, do their jobs for 300 square miles. Memphis is 300 square miles. Okay. This is a big city. Okay. Okay. So they need to, they need to have the best of technology. Okay? Mm -hmm. They need to have the best of protection. Mm -hmm. The mayor is responsible for making sure that the officers have all of the equipment and the mayor, I think, should give leadership. It, it concerns me that our police officers pay. Okay. We're not competitive even in this geographic region. Okay. We need to pay police officers a competitive salary and benefits. Okay. Police morale is affected here. I have a lot of friends that are policemen. Uh -huh. And let me tell you something. If you beat up on your police officers and they don't feel that you appreciate them and you're the mayor and you're the director, they're going to sit down on you. Okay. Do you understand what I mean by yes, that? Yes. So the morale of the police is not what it should be. But then when you take their benefits, yeah. you take their insurance, their spouses, are not, now not covered, what do you expect? And one of the questions someone called me about was, ask the mayor, will he restore the benefits okay. to police officers? Let's talk about that, guys. And their spouses. Okay, let's talk about that. Uh, Mike Williams will tell you, so will Tommy Malone. Mike Williams is president of the Memphis Police Association. Right. Okay. Mike will tell you that I have said to Mike and to Tommy, who's the director of the Memphis uh, Fire Department Union, I said, when I'm reelected, I want to meet with you guys. Mm -hmm. Because you have been saying 
that the the mayor is uh, cooking the you know the term cooking the books on the financial status. Okay. I said I want you all to show me financially a feasible way of restoring benefits. Okay. I said I'm gonna sit down with you. Okay. We're gonna look at these numbers. Uh huh. Because let me tell you what I'm thinking preliminary. Now that's fair game, right? If right. I say to you, right. We, I got an open door policy. I want you to come, present your case to me, show me financially, show me what the number is. Because you've studied this, you've hired consultants. Mike will tell you, that's the invitation I have on the table. Tommy with the fire department will tell you. Now to answer your question, if it can be demonstrated to me uh, financially that we can do this, I'll be the first to do it. Because okay. I never took it away from you. Okay. I, they gained under Harrington. They lost when Harrington left. Okay. And let me tell you what I did. I used to tell uh, Michael Gray. They had the HR office moved over there. Uh, I forgot where it is. And I used to go over there, man, to pay my insurance premium. And I would see these old people, uh, Thaddeus. They were old retirees. So I came into one meeting with them, Thaddeus. Uh -huh. They had bags of medicine. And they put it all out on the table for me. Uh -huh. And they started telling me what their medicine cost. And the premiums went up to over a thousand dollars. And some of these retirees, that is, they may not get two thousand dollars a month. So if you're getting two thousand dollars a month and they were not drawing social security with the city unless they had another job, can you imagine getting two thousand or twenty five hundred dollars a month and $1,300 or $1,500 coming out for your insurance premium for your family? Okay. Can you imagine that? Okay, okay. That's what a lot of these people are dealing with, and they're retirees. I didn't take it away from them. In fact, when I was there, we gave fire and police 13 consecutive years of raises from 3 to 5%, 13 consecutive years, and we gave retirees increases. After I left, all of that stuff. So hopefully I answered your question. If it's financially feasible, I want to look at that. And they're going to show me, if they can show me where it is financially feasible, I'm all for it. Someone also stated to me that sanitation workers did not get their fair share when you were... That's a, that's a lie. Okay. Okay, I had a guy who was on the board and started, uh, there's an article in Commercial Appeal, I need to find that. Uh, and first of all, they need to know the history of what happened in sanitation practice. And God bless his soul. And, uh, the, and the right in the way. I'm getting ready to tell you what happened. Okay. Jim Smith uh -huh. cut a deal with Chandler, the mayor. Okay. The union leadership cut a deal with the then mayor. It wasn't Willie Harrington that cut a deal that cut them out of a defined benefit program. That was a deal that a union leader did with the then mayor. That was Lucy, wasn't it? No, was Bill Lucy was with, yeah, he was with National Ashley okay, then. Okay. But Jim Smith was a local. Right. Lucy probably had to agree to it. Okay. Are you following me? Right. So let's look at the history of how we got here. Okay. So when it, that was, that was the, the, the big mistake that was We're made. We're going back to 1968. Yes, sir. That's, okay. that's when the big mistake was made. When I came in the office, uh, they didn't have a defined benefit program. I forgot the number. For the first time, we started putting, don't hold me to this number, that is. I think it was close to $2 million, to set up a little separate deal for the sanitation workers, okay? okay? We didn't have to do that. But we did that, okay? Once you give up a defined benefit program, actuarially and financially, it is very difficult to go back and to make people whole. Okay. That's the challenge that I believe we're gonna have in fire and police, okay? Okay. Actuary studies, and I'm gonna get too complicated, they drive insurance rates, they drive pension payouts. Actuarially, these insurance companies know how long people are going to live, basically. Okay. They rates of development. Did you know that? Yes. Yeah. So you, you can't just pull this out the dark. In fact, 
I told one guy when I was being interviewed with Aspen, one year we gave Aspen employees a 5% raise. It was the highest raise that any Aspen affiliate gave in America. Okay. It was in Memphis under my leadership, 5%. And they seem to have forgotten that. And, but I think that most of the sanitation workers now do not know the history of being written out yeah. back in 1968. That's correct. And it was a contractual agreement where they would not receive X number of dollars or some type of benefit. But you have just reiterated the fact that under your administration, they receive raises. Raises. Raises, right. Now, here, here's the difficulty, Titus, and I think we're gonna have this with fire and police. I just, just my intelligence tells me this. That is, it's, it's, it's easier to start with a defined benefit program for new people. Okay. It's hard to go back and make something retro active okay okay it's very difficult to restore once you take away okay and make it financially feasible okay so what i said when you said making it financially in, in other words in you're other talking words, about for the city that's right for the city you okay. got to pay for it okay. okay somebody got to pay for it okay that's what i mean uh so i've asked mike of the police department i've asked tom fire department look, look you guys let's sit down bring your financial guys Let's sit down, show me how we can do this. Is that fair enough? That's fair enough. My guest, Dr. W. W. Harrington, will be back with more right after this. You're holding me two hours, man. You got us hostage, man. He got me two hours, man. He got me two hours, man. You know you can't do this in no hours. Huh? <laughs> you know you can't do this in no hours. I mean, you ain't nobody else for 30 minutes. I ain't nobody else. Oh, that's what it looked like. Then, you, you, you say I'm old. <laughs> Look like this. You didn't say I'm old. Hell, yeah, you keep the old man up Oops. here, the 80 year old. <laughs> keep me two hours. Wear me out. You need to wear these young folks out. And I got and to they, be up in the morning at 6 o'clock. Look, you talking about you getting to the, at least you got the job. You told me you got a studio in your house. Right. I got to go to my house okay. and work. <laughs> I'm messing. Now, Dad, let me tell you something else, now, Dad. Uh -huh. You do know I own a house in Collierville. Right. I'm just letting you know, but I live in South Memphis. Okay. I'll just let you know that. But I live in South Memphis. Hmm. I'm hearing you talking about them brothers, their houses. In fact, you know what you're going to do, Thaddeus? Right. I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shock you. Right. I'm going to shock you. If you'll do it. Uh, I, I want you to come one day, because I want you to know what I used to do with my mother when I told you. Uh -huh. I'm gonna invite you to where I live. I want you to sit on the porch with me at age 68, Brad. Then I'm gonna walk you up the street and show you what I'm getting ready to do in my old neighborhood. Now I want you to come and see where I live. I live in my mother's house. I'm getting ready to build another house in the ghetto. Okay. This house I got there in uh, Carnival, I'm gonna take you out there too. Uh -huh. And then once you see that house in Collierville, you see where I live now, you're going to think I'm crazy for not living in Collierville. You showed me, you show me pictures. I did? Yeah. You showed me pictures of the house in Collierville. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Hey, I heard you the other night, man. You were real passionate, man. I said, man, that's my kind of guy, man. There's certain things you can't do as a black man. I know. I, I heard you. I, I'm, I'm built the same way. It's the same thing with me, man. Like my family thinks something wrong with me. They said, Dad, why would you live on Barton Street? I said, my first bicycle I rode. My grandma, my granddad, they had a garden up the street here. My first, I had a job right here, 11 years old. My mama lived in this house. I built the other one. I own five lots here. And the, the white folks ain't gonna get this land. You need, I can be in the FedEx Forum in five minutes from my house. Okay. They ain't getting that land. Okay, okay. I'm buying up all of it. Okay. They didn't want to come across crumb. Okay. You know why? Why? Because it's black. Okay. 
And I don't want them to come across. I'm going to show you. We're going to get patties on Broad Street. You bring them to it. And I got crackers come through, whoever walk through, fix it. Why you gonna live? Is you afraid? No, ain't nobody gonna bother me. No, that's my neighborhood. When I go out in Collierville, it's gated. Okay. It's gated. How many more you got, T? Uh, two more. Who are they? I'm gonna go time I got those. Uh, I'm gonna. Uh, Who? Janita and uh, Sherrod. Bring me on back. <laughs> I'm just going to have 45 more minutes. Uh, Mike Mike almost knocked him out. Huh? Mike almost knocked him out. You know what that is, don't you, Mike? The you know, All that crazy stuff? Crazy. Let, me tell you, let me tell you, come up trying to do something. Yeah. Uh, hustle him, man. Try to hustle him hard. Him. I told Mike, no, he didn't need to see me. <laughs> man, you'd be surprised, man, all this stuff we had to deal with. Awesome, folks, man. Yeah. Man, I've been knowing Latour for years. That's Thaddeus, buddy. That's your buddy. <laughs> well, he pays well. I'm just. All right. <laughs> 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 I have y'all the other night. They don't like that. I said, look, man, just because y'all got a problem with that, don't make that my problem. I mean, I mean, you can't tell me who to like and who to as in there. I said, yeah, he support me. I love it. Don't make somebody else get mad with me because that is supports me. Well, you know, I get that. But I mean, that. But I mean I, it's, it's, so I, if we have a good relationship, then they got a problem with me having a relationship with you. That's crazy. I took Don't make me somebody I else. I took this my ass I know up. that. I know. <laughs> you wait till we do this tag team. I think it is. We're going to do it. I don't already got it fine. Gonna, on what? I'm on, we're going to do a tag team. On so, what? It's a cussing pastor and a cussing mother. I'm going to give you the lead in. I think I can have cussing. I don't think you can. Huh? I heard you, man. You, you're pretty good. But you don't know. <laughs> Mike can hear my you if I could say what I really want to say, no. I said, man, I'm gonna get that to be my spokesman. I'm gonna say this is this is what I can't say. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put that as on staff as my spokesman. You, you think you can out cuss me up? I know I do. I've heard you get on some people. You make me laugh, yeah. Well. Doc, let's talk about Memphis light gas and water. Let's talk about it. There are some people that want me to ask you. As many of them. Would you replace the board and the president of Memphis Light Gas and Water? Let me answer you this way. Uh, at, at this particular point, uh, the only emphatic and very clear statement of intention that I have made is only regarding the police department. Right? Okay. So I'm going to reserve making any comments about any directorships or any board members uh, at this particular time. Okay. The only reason uh, that is is that I have made a, a preliminary announcement that when I'm reelected, dealing with the police department because of the crime problem. Mm -hmm. And I wanted everybody to be very clear on what my intentions are. Then I know that there are internal politics in the police department. Mm -hmm. People are lining up to see who's going to succeed uh, 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 Rollins. Well, uh, and uh, if Harrington is elected, who is? I'm letting the world know that I will have a national search. I want to find a crime-fighting police director to bring to Memphis. Now, anybody locally who wants to apply can apply. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to get into uh, other directorships or board positions at this time. Uh, that is. Well, we, going back to the police department, do you think that there needs to be an increase of officers in the school? Okay, l l let me say this to uh, Thaddeus. Uh, 
I don't think, I stand to be corrected, I think my compliment at one time was higher than what they're trying. I think that what the mayor is attempting to do is to increase the numbers and, and, and I think he's making progress doing that. Here is one, and I've heard the young lady mm -hmm. who's a candidate for office, mm -hmm. she has made a statement that quite frankly, I think is worthy of some examination, okay? Mm -hmm. and the young lady that's running for mayor. Mm -hmm. Now let me tell you what I'm getting at. When I go back, I wanna make a critical analysis to see what is the relationship between the number of officers per 1,000 citizen population to the crime rate. Okay. Are you following me? Okay. I want to make, because if memory serves me correct, I'm, I'm sure it's still that way, about 70% or 60 something percent, it was when I was there, of the city's budget is for public safety. Mm -hmm. Police and fire eat up 60 some percent. It may, I haven't looked at their budget. Mm -hmm. of, the, of the city's revenues, okay? Then I believe the next one is uh, public works, and then you have debt service. Now, mm -hmm. The reason I can tell you all of that is because it's experience and mm -hmm. knowing the budget. Are okay. you following me? Okay. And so if they've got about a 2% growth in revenue, and I've heard the mayor say that they will meet their pension obligation, which ought to free up an additional 10 million a year, they got a little room. But without a tax increase, uh, uh, without a tax increase, you can't make these quantum leaps. So from, if you notice everything I'm saying to you is, I've got to carefully conduct financial analysis to make sure that I'm making intelligent decisions with reliable information. What do you think has been the biggest weakness of this current administration? Um, and, and let me first say, and, and some people may differ with me on this, uh, Thaddeus, uh, and let me go back, and I'm not trying to beat up on this guy. Um, everybody knows I do not think Horton was a good mayor. I, I think he was extraordinarily weak and effective. Uh, I predicted that Jim Strickland would beat him badly. Mm -hmm. And he did. He beat him badly. Mm -hmm. uh, Strickland did not receive a mandate. Uh, I've stated that a dead man could have beaten Horton. He was just that bad. Okay? So Strickland does okay. not have a base even today. By default, Horton was just that bad. Strickland came in, a lawyer. Okay a city councilman, he had no managerial experiences. When you are the mayor, that's a tough job. Mm -hmm. it is a, if you are a strong leader, it's a tough job. Uh, I have strong CAOs, mm -hmm. chief administrative officers, strong directors. As a mayor, I gave broad leadership, held everybody accountable. I had a cardinal rule. If I have to do your job, if I had to come into your camp and make decisions, you won't be there. I fire. Okay. It's just that simple. You got it? It's okay. just that simple. Uh, the other thing I did not allow to happen, and you need to understand why uh, the powers that be wanted me out. First of all, couldn't anybody give me any money? Mm -hmm. Couldn't bribe me. They came after me on a Greyhound investment, which I had a legitimate right to invest in, but nobody ever accused me of somebody doing a deal under the table. Everything I dealt with is on top of a table. Uh -huh. Are you following me? So, let me tell you about people with wealth, wealth and power. If their money can't buy you, let me tell you about a wealthy man. A wealthy man has a sense of entitlement. If he white and he rich, he think he ought to have anything he wants. And to talk to you as a black man, and you independent, and if money don't move you, you look at him just another man, they don't know how to deal with that. 
Do you understand me? Mm -hmm. So, uh, when they couldn't give me money, they, they couldn't handle it. I was not manageable. I was not manageable. They said, who can talk to Harrington? Who can control him? I'm not controllable. I'm independent. Mm -hmm. They can't handle that. Understand what I just told you. If a man's money don't work with you, what else he got? That's why they tried to lock me up. When, when we look at this particular race. Oh, let me finish. Oh, okay. Sure. I didn't finish you. I didn't finish okay. your question. I, I deviated. You had, you had paused. I thought. You're right. I deviated. I had to slide something You're in. right. I know you must. Uh, go ahead. Thaddeus Matthews. Uh, Pastor Matthews. That's, I'm Thaddeus. Yes, sir, Thaddeus. Okay, Thaddeus. You asked me, I think that... Um, uh, Are you having that problem in there? Don't, we don't need to digitize in the night. <laughs> okay, all right. Go uh, ahead. I, I think the mayor surrendered leadership to the rich and powerful. Okay. I think the developers clearly controlled uh, the agenda for Memphis. Uh, I think there is a broad sweeping elitism that controls the mayor and they're calling the shots. Mm. Uh, they did not have that power with me. My independence bothered them tremendously. Do you, do you think that the factor that the mayor has sole contract signing power, yes. is that an incentive by the power brokers to make sure or attempt to make sure that he's in place. Well, they are, let me just say this, Thaddeus. I'm glad you told the audience this. The mayoral position in Memphis is one of the strongest executive position in American government in cities. Okay. If you are the county mayor, and I would never be a county mayor, uh, you're not a real mayor. No, okay. You, you, no. uh, let me just explain. I'm not speaking. I've said it to all of them. Uh -huh. They got a title of a mayor. Uh -huh. But if you are the mayor of the city of Memphis, you have power. Okay. You have authority. If you the so-called, there really is a county executive okay. that they call a mayor uh, of Shelby County. And I think he's got a threshold of, I think 50, it's 50,000. Right. But when you are the city mayor, they can't spend a penny contractually if the mayor doesn't sign. Okay. That's a lot of power. Even the when mayor, the council uh Yeah, they can't spend. Right. They can't spend. Okay. And the mayor cannot spend what's not appropriated. Okay. So there's the balance of power. Okay. If, okay. if the if the council does not approve a budget, the mayor has nothing to spend. Okay. And the council can't spend it. In fact, let me tell you, we have big arguments about that. Even the council staff, because they can't make appointments. Okay. Okay. Formally, if I, if I have interpreted the law, we uh -huh. have to ask Alan Wade. The mayor must approve that. Okay. Because these are all uh, appointments. Okay. By the mayor. Okay. I've never had a problem, but anybody that the council wanted for their staff, I always approved. Okay. Yeah, because they work for them. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's the balance of power. Okay. Did I answer your question on that? Yeah. About strip? Yeah. Of course they want to control it. They want to control it. In, in this race, Doc, he's raised a million dollars, and you haven't come close to a million. <laughs> Dad, uh, I'm struggling for 100000 brother. That's why I want you to reach in your pocket and reach in. You can't write us for 7000 500 It's political season almost over. <laughs> <laughs> and I noticed that one of the newspapers <laughs> made an issue of what you had paid me. Like, oh, they did? Yeah. The Memphis Daily, I think it was the Memphis Daily News. Somebody oh, they looked did. at my financial they disclosure. They looked at financial yeah. disclosure. Yeah. And they saw what you had paid Oh, they me. did? Okay. Yeah. I said, okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you don't do this free? No. 
You everybody, know what I'm everybody know I don't do what I do. Right, you do yeah, and let them know. I want y'all to know. I had to give Mr. Matthew the check. And uh, he, the number changed. And we had to make sure that the numbers added up right. right. So I want to let you know, I had to write this man a check. Yes. Two checks. Yes. Yes. And was glad to write it. Yes. And he's the only person getting the check. Yes. And some of the rest of y'all need to go ahead and write a check. <laughs> <laughs> Cause it ain't over yet. <laughs> and the way some of y'all are going, y'all need my help bad. <laughs> but Doc, yeah. there are those, there's that segment of the community, of the black community, that said Whitney Harrison can't beat Jim Strickland cause Jim Strickland got all this money. He's running commercials all day <laughs> long. He buying Negroes he two buying for a dollar. Uh, how does Willie Harrison expect to win? Let me tell you, guys, how we're going to win. Okay. Let, tell me, me. let me tell you how we're going to win. It's very simple. Let me tell you how we're going to win. We, we, we're going to win because the demographics favor us winning. And it's interesting to me. Uh, don't look at Steve Cohen's race, because you're going to see in my book what happened there. The demographics are such, and you tell your audience this almost every night, uh, and I heard you talk about the census data. We're close to 70% black uh, majority. Well, if they say okay, we're I, 62, I you. You, you, we got to be. I said close to that. Yeah. I, I agree with you. I heard you, I think, last night. Okay, I agree with you on that. Okay, Thaddeus. The largest cohort a subset of voters in Memphis and Shelby County of 50 and older age group. Right. The largest group of that are African American women. Okay. Women, African American women. If you go back and look at all of my elections, I have always overwhelmingly received the vast majority of black women vote. You saw a couple of weeks ago uh -huh. the Harrington Women's Rally. Those women and their colleagues are going to come out for me. You're going to begin to see it, and we're going to talk about what's going to happen Saturday. We're having another big rally, and I'm inviting you. It's called uh, uh, Early Vote with Doc. Okay. I have maybe eight. Harrington Express vans. Mm -hmm. People are going to get on the vans. We're going to the polls to do early voting. We got food. We got music. We're going to have a rally right there at my headquarters and we ride to the polls. We're urging, here's what we can't tell you, because mm -hmm. you're going to watch early voting every day. Mm -hmm. We have because I know the opposition is watching me. I can't tell y'all okay. We are pushing early voting, okay? okay? We want you to come to the rally at 10 o'clock, 10 a.m. Saturday morning. Saturday morning, okay? Yeah. It's a big rally, okay? We have a number of women that are committed to bringing at least three other females with them. We use an exponent. That's why we had 1,125 uh women at that event. Okay. That is going to multiply. So here's how I win. Here's how I win. The over the fifty and older, I'm gonna get the lion share of their vote. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna get the lion share of the African American female vote. That's why you saw Strickland. They were in uh, White Haven uh, yesterday morning. They on the uh, the inter not the, the intersection. Okay. Last week in okay. White Haven. Okay. They opened up an office in White Haven. Okay. Are you following me? Right. What it, they are trying to do is erode my base. Okay. I have a base. So to answer your question, I'm betting that my base is going to come out for me. Mm -hmm. That's not Strickland's base. It's not the young lady's base. It's my base. Mm -hmm. The older voters, they know me. They know me. They're going to come out. Now, 
the school of thought is among the so-called experts, this is gonna be a low voter turnout. Let me tell you what I'm predicting, uh, Thaddeus, is that obviously we will not have the 60 something percent turnout that we had in 1991. Okay. We won't have that. Okay. In fact, I think the last two mayoral elections, I think the, the voter turnout was in the 40 something percent. Right. Am I correct? Right. Uh, the experts are, are prognosticating, that is, predicting that uh, this turnout is going to be in the high 20s or the lower 30 percent. Okay. That's what the so-called experts on turnout. Mm -hmm. Now, the way we, we got to win is I get my base to the polls. If it's a low turnout, my base is to the polls, I win. Okay. If it's a high turnout, I get my base to the polls, I win. Let me tell you what else I'm predicting. I'm predicting that I'm going to get more white votes than many of the experts predict. And let me tell you why, that I'm going to get more white votes. I'm going to get more white votes because there's so many white people when they see me. They stop me, and some of them, are, they're very bold. They said, look, I've never voted for you. I'm going to vote for you this time. I've not seen anybody that likes Rick. I'm talking about white and black folk. The black folks that like and work for him. Or the black folks that like and don't like me. Okay. And jealous of me. And they'll support him on the basis of that. White people, let me tell you the, the mistakes I think Strickland made. You already know, and you and I, you and I agree on a lot of things. I don't know if that's good. Mm. You think that's good? We agree on a lot of things. Well, let me tell you what on the statute. Right. Let me give you an example. Okay. Do you remember when the Army Bell and Walter Bell they called for a big rally in Nathan Bedford Forest? Right. And they invited Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson. Right. So people interviewed me. I said, no, I'm not coming to the rally. And I said, as long as I'm mayor, we're not removing any statues, and I'm not digging up no graves. That ain't going to happen on my watch. Now, I said, when I go down Union, and I see that statue, I'm like Jewish people who say never, never again. Okay. When I look at that statue, it reminds me of a dark period in American history. It reminds me of a dark period in the history of the South, the Confederacy. And so when I say that, when I saw it, never, never again. That's a dark spot in our history, Thaddeus, but it is history. Okay. It's history. It, just, it, 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 it made my resolve stronger. When I saw it, okay. I wasn't going to dig it up. You know what uh, the mayor did? He acquiesced to the so-called activists, and then a few white clergymen, they joined, wrote a letter, and he removed those statues. He not only removed them, <laughs> and by the way, if I were going to remove them, Mm -hmm. I would have removed them at 12 noon because I would have believed in it. He removed them like a thief in the night. And there are many white people that are going to remind him of that by not voting for him. There were people that didn't like Harrington, white, but they disliked Strickland. They also see Strickland pandering. Okay. Listen to me, black people. You go on his website and it has made me sick. I do not understand why our people can be that gullible. Strickland acts as if he doesn't know any white people. <laughs> he doesn't, he not, he's not even asking white people to vote for him. I'm having another big function Friday evening. 90% of the people that will be, what are they? they you have the white folk meeting. Yeah, I'm having, <laughs> no, listen to me. No, come on, man. <laughs> there is sunset, no. Oh. It's dark at sunset okay. on Harbor Island. Okay. Uh, on Tom Lee Park. <clears throat> well, the white folk. Listen, well, there'd the, be nothing but white folk. I want white, white folk. The white folk got to have some hope. The I, white folk ain't got no hope. I want white people to vote for me, too. <laughs> Hell, I want everybody to vote. <laughs> Strickland they ain't even asking for the white folks' vote. White folks, you don't want y'all vote. Strickland don't want your vote. I want white folks' vote. I'm a good <laughs> man. <laughs> I want Hispanic vote. I want gay people vote. I want everybody's vote. <laughs> yeah, 
want Republicans vote. I want Democrats vote. I want everybody's vote. I want Christians vote. I want Muslims vote. Sinners too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Hypocrite votes too. <laughs> but it, it, you're right, Doc. It, it, it does appear <laughs> as though he don't know no white folk. He, 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 you know, and where his family is. Well, I ain't getting into that. I heard you the other night. I ain't getting into that. That is. He, he's not asking the white, I'm asking the white folks to vote for me. I want you to vote. I want black folks to vote. White people, there is hope. <laughs> I mean, but, but, and it, you know, it's sickening to those of us it's sickening. that understand the struggle. When you see Negroes hee hee and ha ha scratching their head and dropping their head. You go to Hickory Hill, the color commercial, playing basketball with little black children. His whole basis has been pandering to black folk. It's ridiculous. And, and you know, because I asked Saturday, ain't no white preachers behind it? Yes, I'm glad. Yes, I'm, can I make one other statement on, yes. your, on your show, sir? Yes. Here's an observation. I know you've been trying to, you're really trying to educate and wake our people up. And I got that. Mm -hmm. You're trying to wake them up. And mm -hmm. I understand that. Mm -hmm. Here's what here's what I want people that's looking at this show. I want black and white people to hear me and follow this analysis. Why is it that I can drive in black neighborhoods and I can see the white mayor's signs in black residents' yards. But I can drive on Yates okay. and Shady Grove, okay. but I cannot see the black male sign in white residents. Okay. Why is that? Do you understand what I just said? Uh -huh. So which group, there's something wrong with one of those groups. Why is it that I can go in some black neighborhoods? Twinkle sign. You know, let me tell you what happened. That is, and I'm going to say to the people that live on Blueberry, and Mike was with me, uh, that is on yesterday. There's a lady, and there's another lady. We'll be there tomorrow on, on Blueberry. That is, I could not believe it. There were so many Strickland signs on Blueberry, I couldn't believe it. One black lady that lives there, she said, Dr. Harrington, it's, and she talked bad like we do, not uh -huh. as, quite as bad. Uh -huh. She said, we got some black folks that can rub two quarters together. They can live on this street, Bluebird, and they've forgotten who they are. Mm -hmm. She said, bring the two signs and put it in my yard. Mm -hmm. Now what got me was, I said, Mike, if I drive on Yates, Shady Grove, you're not gonna see a black man sign in white folks' yard, but I can drive in black folks' yard, and I'm not racist, uh -huh. but I can see the white man. Now, somebody is a little, what, backwards. Uh -huh. What uh -huh. race of people, backwards? Us. Us. You've been trying to say that. So, but Mr. Strickland knows this. I used to tell a preacher, I said, sir, don't get mad with me. I said, in the old days, what the white politician going back to Boss Crump and the rest of them, uh -huh. they gave y'all a wallet million and a hundred dollar bill. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And you sold us out. Now y'all more expensive. They give you grants. They give some of your members of your congregation big jobs. Uh -huh. That's how they pay you off now. Uh -huh. And then have a, a prayer meeting breakfast let you take pictures with them. Y'all cost more now. And then the girls were just grinning to be, I'm with the mayor of the city. And, and, and let me tell y'all something, when y'all look at that commercial with those police officers, those are fake police officers. <laughs> <laughs> the city of Memphis employees cannot be in those commercials. Those police officers that y'all see in that commercial with Jim Strickland, they pay, they secured the guards, uh, just some clowns in a uniform. They are not official city of Memphis.
police officers. He's tricking those of you who are wanting to be deceived. Because, Doc, it's, it's bad to say, but there's a segment of us that want to be fooled. There's a segment of us that want to feel as though everything is okay in the city of Memphis. Mm -hmm. And your oppressor will never be your deliverer. That does not mean that you hate white folk. No. It means that you're proud of who you are. Right. And, and, and that's the reason I got a uh, 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 problem with these chicken-eating, punk-ass pastors. Uh, I can say it, uh, you can't, Mr. Mayor, until after you get elected. <laughs> see, when I see La Silver Gray, when I see Bill Atkins, yeah. who call themselves being civil rights leaders, Okay, that were fighting for the dignity of black folk who were even a part of, in 1991 of filing that lawsuit. Course, yeah. There were seven people uh, Bill Atkins, Lysimba, uh, uh Randy Wade, uh -huh. his brother Gwen Sneed, Dr. Tali uh -huh. Muhammad, somebody I'm missing out of that. Uh -huh. That group changed the politics for black folk in our community, and here it is now. And I read that Memphis Flyer article, and they asked, Jackson Baker asked uh, Bill Atkins, why now? And the only thing that Bill Atkins could say was about them damn statues, okay? That, he couldn't say that Willie Harrington wasn't a good man, it's the statues. And then I went back to that picture. Oh, uh, he me. Huh? Or why it's he like, hugging you? Well, it's like he hugged me that year and this year. <clears throat> stuck that knife in my back. Well, but that, that's what that's what Judas did to Jesus. Yes, sir. Pastor. And these Negroes are traitors. And so, Memphis Fly, when you quote me, <laughs> you got it damn right. I don't give a damn about them handkerchief head, walla carrying Negroes. They are not strong men. They seek to divide the black community. And ask yourself why all of a sudden today, when I posted what I posted, that Jim Strickland took it off of his Facebook page. They are ashamed, and they need to be ashamed of themselves. But I, I'm telling people in this community, hell, I was gonna say they don't give a one vote, but hell, they don't leave, even live in the city of Memphis. Bill Atkins, Brandon Porter, Ed Stevens, LaSimba, and some of them, nothing happened in Nick Rose, I don't even know. Bishop Williamson, Henry Williamson. See, Bishop Williamson got promised some money in April for Collins Chapel. Now the money hasn't come forth yet, so now, you can't get the money unless you come out and say that Master Jim is the best man. Now, when I win, I'll give you the money. These Negroes are getting paid off. When Commercial Kill, when you write me, make sure you quote me correctly because y'all will mess me up too. Uh, but it's time, Doc. It's time now. Will there be a number? Mike, is there a number that we're going to have for people to call that needs to vote, yes, get a sir. ride to the poll? Give it to her. Give it to her now, and we're going to keep that number up. All doing early voting. Even on my radio show in the morning when I play blues, we're going to have that number constantly going out. Is there any part of the city that you all will not be going or is it wherever in the city people let, need let, right? Let, let me tell you what we're going to do, Thaddeus. Okay. Uh, and, and first of all, we appreciate the fact uh, we're also going to send you the artwork. I mean, I got the Harrington Express on these vans. Okay. We're going to send you the artwork, Mike, with the number on it. Send Thaddeus the artwork, you know, with the bus and the van and the number. You get the they, number? They're going to send it to you. I'll send it off. He's going to send it all to you. Okay. She's going to send it all to you, okay. and you'll be able to. Put it up. Okay. Thaddeus, may I just say this too, because uh, uh, I, I know I think you got a few more minutes. And it's your show, Mr. Matthew. It ain't Matthew. Go ahead, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, sir. It's your show. I understand. Yes, I don't sir. want you to tell me. I've seen you. 
This is my show. This right, is that's right. Matthew show. I'm Maybe I'll get a chance to come up to the. Uh, I'm gonna is it on the pimp? Is it up on the top floor <laughs> now? It's on seven. I've never now been you know to I will put somebody out. You know of my own. Yeah. You know they're gonna ask them right what <laughs> that I'm about to say. That is, here's what we gotta do. And I've heard you on all of your shows tell people that we got to win in early voting. Okay? Right. The, the, we're going to overpower them in early voting. We got to urge people to go out to vote. I'm predicting that the black vote is going to be substantially higher than the white vote. Okay. To be honest with you, there are a number of white people that are indifferent. They're not excited about street. I'm telling you. Okay. The typical white voter is not excited. They may not be overwhelmingly excited about Willie Harrington either, okay. but they respect my leadership, okay? okay? So I don't think you're gonna see a, 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 a respectable turnout in the white community, but I think in the black community you will. That is why Strickland is working hard to bamboozle uh, the black community, and he's got a few token African-American preachers that are trying to help him to do that mm -hmm. because he knows the black vote is crucial. Mm -hmm. He also knows historically that black people, many of them, not all of them, can be very gullible, mm -hmm. okay? Can mm -hmm. be very gullible. Mm -hmm. What I saw in Bluebird, uh, I couldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. I could not believe mm -hmm. it. I could not believe the signs that I saw on that little street. I don't know what's going on in that street, mm -hmm. Uh, but then, thank God, I went to another street over in Whitehaven. You saw Harrington, red and black. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what's different from them, some of them people over there on Bluebird. Something wrong with them. Mm -hmm. I don't know what in the hell's going on over mm -hmm. there, man. Mm -hmm. They must not know anything about history and politics. Mm -hmm. That's what I saw. Well, I found out about Bluebird. I don't know. Uh, Ed Ford Singer lives on Bluebird. Oh, he does. And. He told me, he said, you need to tell Doc that they need to get somebody over here. Because these folks done went crazy. They have. I saw it. Okay. I saw it day before. You. I'll, I'll be over there tomorrow. There's a lady over there uh, uh, that we put the sign in the wrong yard. <laughs> so we're going back over. Oh, I'll put signs out first. Okay. okay. Yes, sir. We'll be over there tomorrow. So tell me, how many minutes we got left? about eight minutes. Doc, tell me and tell this audience about what's going on on this Saturday. Uh, this Saturday, uh, Thaddeus, and to your listening audience, uh, I'm urging you, first of all, uh, this election is very critical to the future of our city. I understand the game plan that the powers to be have. They want Strickland in the office for the next four years, and they're gonna deplete the resources. They're gonna give away this city to the rich and powerful, and they're gonna give a few contracts to a few blacks who won't live with you, won't eat at Piccadilly's with you like I do. They're gonna set them up, and the people that are in there have not. That's the camera I want to make up now. Oh. These are the social media folks. Oh, the, the people that are in the have nots are going to be in that have not category. We're urging you to go out and vote in record numbers. Come to our headquarters on South 3rd, Saturday morning. We're going to have vans. If you choose to drive your own automobile, that's fine. I hope many of you will be in a caravan with me. We're going to do early voting. Go and vote early. We're also saying to those of you who get calls from our phone banks are working tonight. Okay. We're urging a number of our people to vote Friday. So if you received a call to vote Friday, you are among that group that we are asking to call 10 other people. See, we use exponents. Mm -hmm in getting people. Mm -hmm. We got phone banks working tonight. We got a group of people that's gonna vote early Friday. Then we're urging a lot of other people to come and go with me mm -hmm. and vote on Saturday. Mm -hmm. We're having a rally, we have a stage, we have food, and on Saturday, 
we want to flood these early voting locations, and we've got about three that we've targeted. Okay. Now, uh, what you're going to get, uh, uh, Mr. Matthews, we're going to send you maybe tonight or tomorrow. We're going to send you uh, what you need that you can post for us. We're going to send you the telephone number mm -hmm. and the location of the vans that will be leaving. Mm -hmm. We then plan all during early voting to move our van operations into other sections. For example, I think we're having a big rally in New Chicago. We're going to have one in Hickory Hill. We're going to move our vans to different areas of the city, and we're going to have dispatchers. Okay. People call in, and we're going to have rallies. We're taking them to the polls. Okay. Yeah. Let me tell you what else we have. Strickland cannot do this. The young lady cannot do what we're doing. Strickland got all this money. Uh, but he, that's what I'm trying to tell you. He can't get no van? No, he can get van, but ain't nobody on them. Okay. Why are you going to get van? Nobody's going to get on them. Okay. Yeah. He can't do it. He know, I like what he said in the paper. He said, well, he's going to go door to door. He can't get a thousand women to come up for a rally. He can't get four hundred men. He can get them little. How many preachers you say showed up? About thirty. About thirty. Yeah, he can get about thirty preachers. He can get thirty preachers. Yeah. Well, <coughs> how many minutes I got? I got three minutes. Yes, sir. Let me say this: the number for the caravan will be on the TV all during the early voting. The polls open, there are 18 precincts, uh, places that you can vote rather. They're open from 11 until seven on Friday, from 11 until seven, on Saturday from 10 until four. We cannot wait until October 3rd. The election is not won on election day. Early voting is the day that we, and that's every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. All of them are closed on Sunday. Carry everybody that you know. Damn these preachers, okay? All of them, and I know some of them are a little mad at me. I don't give a damn. They ain't gave me nothing, no way. And they can't give me nothing, and I'm not for sale. So if Strickland thought he could have gotten me, he would have. But they know, you know, I record everything, so everybody would have known if you offered me some money. Look, black men stand up. Those my age, and I'm 60, how old am I? 60, yeah, I forget some day, 62. <laughs> We're the age when 50 plus is that number that votes. We go to the polls. Them 20 year olds, them 30 year olds, is few and far between. Let's galvanize. Let's not forget that we are black people in this city and we deserve to have Dr. Sheraton back in office. You've heard him tonight. He's answered, and I think I've thrown everything at him that was important for you to know. And he slid in everything else that he could slide in. <laughs> Doc is going to win this race. Saturday morning, 10 a.m., be at the headquarters. What's the address? 3358 South 3rd. 3358 South 3rd. The old food stamp office. <laughs> now, <laughs> that'll, do it. that'll do it better. You might not remember the number. But you remember where the old food stamp office uh, was located. That's his office right next door to the old Crystal Palace. We can do this. We can galvanize. <clears throat> and you bourgeois Negroes down in Twinkletown, remember where you come from. And right now, y'all complaining about what's going on with the Elvis Presley thing, bagging up to your yard. Y'all can hear the show in, in your house. We need people that are going to fight for the city of Memphis. And I, I remember, to all you preachers, I remember something that Willie Harrington said years ago, and I can't find it. 
and this has been when he first got elected, he said, you can never be free as long as you take the white man's money. You remember saying that? Mm -hmm. Can't be free, can't be independent. Yeah, no. Not mm -hmm. if you only take and people buy you, you can't be free. Yeah, so if you want freedom, you got to have the truth. Know the truth and the truth shall make you free. What we need is Dr. Harrison back in office. He probably, this is probably gonna be his last run at almost 80 years old, okay? I'm in good shape, man. I go work out, I'm running. I saw, I'm I saw him a little tape no, no, running, no, no, no. hell. I'm getting ready, Thaddeus, to go back into the gym, uh, getting in shape, man, get the speed bag, the heavy bag, everything. Who you gonna bump? No, I just need to be in shape. Okay. I mean, you know, somebody might act crazy out here. That's what you got Mike for. Mike gonna shoot him. I gotta knock him out. That's reading that guy to tell. Mike gonna shoot him. I'm gonna knock him out. <laughs> All right, it's my time up. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my guest has been Dr. W.W. <laughs> w. Harrington. October 3rd, yeah, it's coming. Early voting is the 13th through the 28th. Go and vote. Doc, thank you again for being thank a guest you, on the show. Until tomorrow night, top of the evening to you. <laughs> you guys, put this yeah. in your neighbor's yard. Okay. Put this in your neighbor's yard. Huh? <laughs> said, put it in your neighbor's yard. Okay. Yeah. Let's see how much power you got in your neighbor's yard. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, don't you? I'd be one of these shirts.